In this video, I'm gonna show you how to track your passive income using a spreadsheet which I use for my dividend growth portfolio using Google Sheets. I noticed when searching online for investing spreadsheets, there are few to be found. And the ones that are there either apply to overseas investing communities or you have to pay $120 a year for a spreadsheet. So I decided to create a spreadsheet that you can use in the UK for free. And all I ask in return is that you'll consider subscribing as I document my journey as a UK investor looking for dividend growth stocks and I pick monthly stock picks too. Thank you. So firstly, you're gonna to need to have a Google account and if you're watching this on YouTube, you probably do. Next, if you go into the description of this video below, it should be if you click show more down there, and it will say free spreadsheet. If you click this, FYI, I can't see your information, so don't worry. Uh, if you've got your name tethered to your Google account, I won't be able to see any of that and no one else will be either. And then you'll be able to view this spreadsheet. However, you'll notice that you can't edit it. So what you're gonna to want to do is you want to click file, go down, click make a copy. You'll then be brought up with this small little tab where it will say, uh, name you can rename this to what you want and then once you click OK It will go to your drive and then a new window should have opened Then, if you want to close the current tab and go into the other tab You'll see the spreadsheet So you're gonna to want to start adding your ticker symbols to the left hand column under ticker for example Red row so for that you will want to do LUN LON colon RDW which is a ticker symbol for red row according to Google if you're unsure on any of your ticker symbols simply just Google the company you're interested in. So for example, Royal Dutch Shell, put share price in Google and then it will come up with the share price, but underneath it should say LON colon RDSB. And there is the importance, you need to make sure this is correct, is then once you've updated this in the company name section, you'll then see. And if you don't put uh, London or LUN in front of it, then things like Tesco are gonna be the tractor supply company. And that's probably not what you want in your portfolio. So then once that's done, you should also see the share price. And this is in GBX. If you don't know what GBX is, it basically means pence. However, this is a little bit more accurate than just in pounds, as then you can see decimal points of pence as well. So that's why I have it in. You can change this, and all you have to do is just click onto it, you'll see the formula, and then you'll just divide by 100. However, I recommend not doing this, as this will interrupt another formula used in the current value. Then you want to input the number of shares of each of these stocks you own. Personally, for things like Red Row, for me, I'll put 325. Once this has been listed, it will calculate your total value of your investments. Now you're gonna to want to go onto a website called Dividend Data. You could also use other websites such as Dividend Max, but Dividend Data is what I personally like to use. So what you want to do is click onto this website, then click at the top, Dividend Yields. You'll then see a list of the FTSE 100 and the FTSE 250. Those are the two market indices that I invest in, so I don't really need anything else. Now you want to find the stocks you've suggested. So if we look for the FTSE 100, and the shortcut for this instead of scrolling all the way down would be pressing Control and F. This uh, puts a little search bar on the bottom left. If you search for the company's name or the ticker symbol, then it will appear. So I'll put TSCO, which is Tesco, the ticker symbol for it, and it should automatically appear on my screen. And then on the right hand side, I'll click the little arrow. At this point, you'll see a dividend yield graph. That's not really that important for you. Just scroll down. Then you'll see stats about the current yield. What you want to take from this is the current yield payment. So what you'll see is it will be on the bottom right and it will say a figure. However, if this stock has been cut recently, then the yield will be red and it's very likely that you'll be missing data inputs. So what I suggest doing here is going to scrolling down to the very bottom of the screen, clicking the dividend history tab for the certain stock and then looking there. So typically I look at the year of 2019, assume that there's no growth and then add that up. So now that you've got a total figure, for example, 30 pence, I'm going to put that into the dividend column. You're going to want to leave it in pence so that it's uh, calculated fine. As uh, obviously uh, some dividend payments are like a pence or less, it would look ridiculous in pound format. I should note that if the dividends are paid in a different currency to GBP, then I currently don't have the solution for this. So what I've done is I've just used the exchange rate at the, day, at the day of researching this stock by simply getting the price. So for instance, Shell, it has quarterly payments of 16 cents, uh, I'll put 64 cents into Google, and then it should translate it automatically into my local currency, which is pounds. I'll then input that data into my spreadsheet. Once you've inputted the dividend uh, into your spreadsheet, you should then see 
a yield column and a percentage should appear. This is based on the current share price of this and this will update uh, 20 minutes after it is on the stock market. Very similar to many of the investment platforms where there is a delay in seeing stock prices. Usually it's 15 minutes, so it'll be around 15 to 20 minutes and this will update automatically. Obviously, if you wanted, you could add more columns such as your average share price and do more calculations. And if you excel at uh, creating spreadsheets, then you can. But for the time being, I've left it very basic so that anyone can use it. But if you'd like to develop on it further, feel free. Now, simply repeat all of this for all of your current stocks. And if it's not working, then you'll want to just click at the bottom right of the box of data. There should be a little blue, uh, blue cube at the bottom right of the rectangle, at which point you click that and drag down. The ones you'll want to drag down are for as followed. Yield, annual income, company name, share price, and current value. These are all formulas in the uh, spreadsheet. The rest of them are manual inputted data. As you can see, they've all been highlighted as by the color gray. Once you've filled this all out on the right side of your screen, you should now see your portfolio allocations in percentage. This is just a great way to see how your diversification is if you're overexposed to a specific stock. Uh, if you don't want that there, just click it at the very top and press the delete key. You can add different graphs for this based on your knowledge of spreadsheets. I've personally left that there for you. There's also, if you look at the bottom of your screen, you'll see that there's two little tabs. One says portfolio and one says dividend growth. The dividend growth tab is very basic, but if you want to click there, you'll see a small graph and a table. The table is for the month and then the income for each month. So you tally up all of your money from, the, from that month and then type it into the table. I started my dividend growth portfolio in April 2020, hence that's my first figure. However, I suggest you putting in the same month and year as when you started and then just listing it downwards. Uh, you can keep adding dates to this. It doesn't matter. It will automatically update the graph and then you can put in your dividend payments. For example, I've left mine there, which would have been mine for this month, which is around £17. And then I've just put in estimated figures or, or very generous estimated figures as the year goes on. However, it won't be as stable as this, as you know, as a dividend investor, but it's just an example. And if you have any questions about the spreadsheet, please leave a comment down below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. However, if you're watching this video, if you see a comment where someone has a problem, you think you can answer it personally, feel free. My spreadsheet knowledge is not the best in the world. So if any, anyone can help each other in the community, that would be brilliant. So I'd like to thank you all for watching. I'm Osborne Foreman. Have a good night.